Hello, uh, welcome to the Soaring Cafe. My name is Rand Baldwin, and we're here in Dick Butler's hangar where the Concordia is being constructed. And uh, I'm here with uh, Chris Woodward. Chris is, comes from a, a soaring family. He's been a he's a soaring pilot himself, and an RC flyer, and a very talented air, airplane builder. And Chris has been helping out with the uh, uh, construction of the Concordia. So, uh, Chris, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you're what you're doing now? Well, uh, Dick uh, called and said uh, he was trying to find a, uh, a type of material or something, an alternative to paint uh, for the ailerons and flaps to try to keep the weight down and to try to keep some time down as well. Um, I guess the normal process is to paint them and then to uh, sand and buff them down as thin as you can uh, to try to get the weight down as mid to an absolute minimum. And uh, Dick had, had looked at using a, a type of covering used in model airplanes called Monocoat, which is made here in the U.S. And um, we we looked uh, originally looked at it, and the weight was good, but we were having trouble getting the Monocoat to stick to the um, carbon fiber in the Kevlar. And and another problem was is that uh, the temperature for applying the covering is about 250 degrees Fahrenheit, and the carbon fiber and the epoxy resin is only good for about 150 degrees Fahrenheit. So we had some problems where it was starting to um, damage the epoxy on some of the test samples that we did. So um, I started looking around for like a type of uh, vinyl or something with a sticky back uh, so that we could get away from using a, a heat sensitive um, uh, covering uh, material to something that was a sticky back. But in most of those cases, they were actually quite heavy. They were very thick, um, and then the application of the sticky back um, added a considerable amount of weight to it as well. So I remembered a product that I'd used, uh, I've used several times in the past, um, that is a company in the UK called Solar Film, and they were one of the original founders of making a heat shrinkable polyester based. Um, material uh, to cover model airplanes back in the 60s and uh, back when model airplanes were either covered with tissue paper or or uh, silk and dope and uh, they were the first one to actually use the plastic type material well they're they're still in business and used quite a bit in the in europe uh, the products that we use here in the u.s uh, from them are are typically like a, a fabric based system um, that already has a collar applied to it and um, but I got in touch with the company and asked for some samples, and we weighed out the samples, and they were very close to what they said they were going to be. And at the lighter range of the um, allowed weight that Dick had allowed for the for the covering, it came out to be uh, approximately 72 grams per square meter, um, which is about the same weight as Monocoat, but this already has a sticky back on it. So then we had to kind of figure out a way to put it on there so that it would stay. I mean, when you're you're dealing with a single piece of covering that's uh, you know 25, 30 feet long, and trying to get it aligned so that it you know it doesn't stick down at the wrong time, or that you end up with bubbles. And I had had some experience years ago doing a window tent, and so we used basically a similar technique used by some modelers as well to use a, a, like a, a Johnson and Johnson baby shampoo mixed with water. Uh, sometimes you can add a little bit of alcohol as well. Um, and then you spray that on and then you kind of squeegee it on like window tint. Um, and then you, uh, you squeegee out all the material and then that leaves the adhesive uh, sticking uh, to the carbon. And it, it, the finish turned out as fantastic. And uh, uh, I did get to find a place where I had had extra material that accidentally got wrapped around the back side of an aileron that had not been covered on the back side. And it stuck down, and then I got to see how tough it was to get off, <laughs> and uh, it it stuck extremely well. So uh, we're we're really really pleased with that. So, but that, that's uh, that's basically what we're doing. Uh, I've added some uh, some fill, uh, some light, uh, I guess uh, micro balloons, a polyester micro balloon, and uh, sanded down to the minimum uh, weight as we can, um, as well as block sanding everything to get a real nice finish when we put the uh, put the film on. But, but as you can see, it, it turned out really, really nice um, and, uh, and is below the weight. It's almost a tenth of the weight of what a paint uh, application would be. So it's, it's quite substantial. So, but, you know, it's the first time it's ever been done, and, you know, we'll kind of see how uh, durability holds up in Uvalde. So. Cool.
well, you're pushing the state of the art as far as applying this to sailplanes. Yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. You know, uh, uh, you know, my my background. I mean, I was an aircraft mechanic for almost 15 years and worked in the air show business with Leo Loudenslager, and, and we we chose a lot of things back then uh, that some modelers were doing. You know, um, it's interesting how the two worlds kind of interact with each other. You know, uh, full scale airplanes and model airplanes, and uh, you know, Dick has a, a background in model airplanes, and so do I. So. You know, we kind of used a little bit of our experience in, in the different fields and to come up with new ideas. You know, it's a proven technology, but, you know, may have not been used in that particular field. Well, it looks great. All right. Well, <laughs> Thank, thanks. Thanks so much. Sure. Yeah, this is Rand Baldwin reporting for the Soaring Cafe.